Good morning, YouTube. So here we have Owen, who's helped us in many previous videos, and we're going to be doing the front brakes on his 2007 Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo. 3.7. 3.7 liter. But, I mean, all your Grand Cherokees, I believe from 2005 to 2010, have the same setup. So all we've done on this side so far is jack up the car. We're about to put a stand under it, because I just realized we didn't have one there. It's sitting back there. And then we took off the five lugs, which are 19 millimeters. We have our 19 millimeter deep well impact. And we just ran all those off, pop the tire off. And next up is gonna be the two 14 millimeter bolts on the back of the brake caliper. Now, very quickly before we do that, it's gonna behoove you to go in here and press your uh, brake pad back with the piston. So we'll have Owen do it, or if he wants to. All right, so I'm coming Let's between think. the caliper and the pad. I went like up here. You went on the front side? Yeah, and then, yeah. If you can get on the front side and then just pull back mm. and just nice steady pressure. Like, I'm coming on this surface? Yep, yep. And just pull back, yep. And you see it starting to move here. Now it's starting to give real well. Yep, and you just, it's not about doing it fast, it's just about doing it steady. And you'll probably have to do it two or three times, just readjusting here and there. And once again, if you don't get these all the way pushed back, it's no big deal. Just makes it easier down yeah. the line. Just makes it easier to get them back on, but chances are we're still gonna have to push them a hair once we get it off, and that's no problem at all. Like we can, we'll show you how to do that. Do you wanna give it a crank? Give it a crank, sure. Yep, so if I almost see right there, right? I can't see too much. Just getting right uh, there. Let me get the light on. Yep, should just be pressed. Yep, there you go. And you're just um, getting it right on the front of the rotor. Is the screen supposed to be black? Yeah, you can tap it and it'll come back. Okay. It just turns off after recording for a bit. But yeah, just nice, slow, steady pressure. And it does feel like it's pretty much all the way back there at this point. And I mean, all we're doing with this is just working these uh, little pistons, if you can still see them back there. Just pushing them back into the caliper, make everything easier down the road. But now that we think we have those pretty much all the way, we're going to come in with our 14 millimeter, hit this bolt, and whoop, there, that one fell. And then there's another 14 millimeter on the bottom. You're, if I can yeah, find there. it, yeah, right there. Maybe. Mm -hmm. there You're on it. Yep, there we go. And now the big key to this is never. I'm letting go. Yep, got it. Never let this just hang. You put a bunch of extra pressure on this line, and if that happens, you can risk collapsing the line, at which point this brake's not gonna work. Or it'll lock up the caliper over here. It all depends on when it decides to break. So a lot of people will use like a metal hanger and just run an edge of the hanger here and another edge here and let it hang. Or it also works to set it up here as long as you're not taking the rotor off. Now the rotors on his look good enough and he hasn't noticed issues where it's kind of stuttering when he's braking. So we're just doing the brake pads and the hardware and then we're gonna lube everything up real good, make sure everything's good for him. We said clips are inside or outside? Uh, we'll have to look at it and see based on. Well, I'm talking the screaming clip. Uh, I believe the clips were on the inside. Okay. So yeah, if we look at it real quick, it'll just get the other way. Yeah, oh, you're starting thickness. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> well. It's probably yeah, easier to show the thickness that way. <laughs> yeah, just, just a little bit of difference there, as you can tell. Yep. So all we're doing at this point is we're walking off the pads, and as you said, it's they're pretty low. They're starting to show like their little wear lines. And his, the I guess these are OEM most likely. Probably. They don't have the little clip that the other one had that kind of makes it squeal. But the ones that we're putting in will. So we're just coming to either side, and we'll just take it and ah. Kind of walk it off and then we're also going to pull off these little hardware clips maybe maybe they're a little harder where's that uh screwdriver yep Sorry, bar, screwdriver. Where'd I put it? Oh, there it is. okay we'll just come here and got that one off and then bottom one and all four of these clips on the driver's side and then the passenger side, there's two per side, they're all the same. 
you don't have to worry about orientation of them or anything like that. I mean, you uh, do, but it's not like they're well, yeah. side dependent. Yeah. I mean, you just like there's, there's only, only one way they're going to clip in. Yeah. So you'll you'll know when you have it right. And then you can push them down in and mini hand. I just kind of take a small hammer. Small. Make sure, for sure. Yeah. Tiny. And I mean, the thing is, you're not trying to bend them down. You're just trying to get them to bite down. Make sure they're seated all the way. It's just the big thing. And if they're not seated, you'll know because your brake pads are not going to cooperate with you at all. So I'm going to use the other new one. The same thing right up top. come back with the new ones and our clip one should be inside and we just kind of look it's got one that's up one that's down and this came off the inside so i show that again because i don't get a great shot of it yeah see like out of the two pins there's one that's like pushing up and then one that's kind of recessed so that's how we know that for these at least that they match which sides and i'm gonna have a heck of a time doing this from this angle do you need to swap your angle yeah should be good can you the screwdriver? Maybe. Let me get the top one first, because I can see the bottom one better. Okay, so that's in there now. No, the upper looks like it is. Yeah, there we go. Okay. It just had a little bit of a crack to it. Yeah. And the lower one, same dealio. It was okay, just see. hanging up right on that corner. And it's got some use, and yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to push these pistons in, but actually, grease everything right. Yeah. Oh. Do you want to turn the grease? Hmm? Just a general brake lube, brake grease, whatever they want to call it for that particular brand. And then you're just going to grease anywhere it's supposed to touch. So I just, I grease up here too because it'll help it slip on later, but that's okay. Okay, I'm just move over here. Do the same thing back here. Oh, I think I got a little too far, but that's okay. You got lost in the sauce. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, and then I'll also now grease these two points, which are just what the caliper slides on. So we'll do one of these at a time. Let's clean off the old grease, and more importantly, the old dirt that's on there. a bit yeah just a little bit once again if you over grease them it just pushes out the side it's not a big deal so we'll come back here and it's just a matter of finding out where it goes and then pushing it nice and in same deal for the bottom one Regrease this. And same deal, just start somewhere and work to the opposite side. Ooh, that's a bunch. <sighs> and I'm sure that's overkill, but it'll push back. And it's got this like rubber boot, so it's always good to have a little extra grease on that boot. And now at this point, you can see the pistons are still sitting out some. So I'm fairly sure when I try to put these on, yep, I don't have the clearance. You can see it's not clearing over here on this side. So what I'll do is I'm gonna set this back here for a second. 
just take an old brake pad and kind of like set the caliper up and down. And then I'm just going to cover one caliper with the brake pad and push down. Maybe. It's worked nice and easy on the other side. Yep, yeah, and it's going slowly. <clears throat> you can just see comparatively that one went back a good bit and I'm still going to take that one a little further. Sometimes you'll get these where it's not going to push back in. You know, that's when you're going to have a Dickens of the time. Oh. You can get a rebuild kit for the caliper or a new caliper is typically what you have to do in that case. Okay. Just because it means it's gummed up at some extent or it doesn't want to have the full range of motion. Come on. If I should shrink this on this one. You probably did. Nah, it's gonna go. It's just, let me see if I can do it with just my thumbs. And now at this point, it's just a matter of taking this, coming back down here, and slipping them all together. Oh yeah, I hung up and last time. Now what you'll do is you're gonna come in and it's gonna stop because you gotta push in each of those. So the top one and the bottom one, just push them in a little bit. Just those rubber boots that yep. the pins we cleaned. Yeah, and then I'll go ahead and do the bottom one first because I can see less down there. Just kind of like lightly thread this one in because you still have to kind of fine play. tune where everything is on the top side. And nope, I'm not quite in the hole. Right there, I think. Yep. Right there. So I'm just going to go ahead and finger tighten these and then I'll drop my impact on them and run them down. And like all this extra stuff, all the extra uh, grease up here. I mean, I'll come back and I'll clean off, but overall, it's not a problem. You just want to try to keep it from getting on your actual rotors. In this job, it isn't too bad. I mean, going through it for the first time, if you have a nice little YouTube video, you're kind of watching through and playing maybe an hour, hour and a half. But once you figured it out, like... I mean, this side, we're at 16 minutes. 16 minutes on this side. See, so yeah, I mean, we did the other side first, even though I'm going to show it second in the video, just because... It was a problem yeah, side. Well, it was more so me learning. I watched yeah. a couple YouTube videos last night on this, but by no means have I ever done one of these Jeeps before. Yeah. But... I mean, the process is the exact same for the other side. There's nothing special about it. Oh, but okay, so get up out of here and we're just reattaching the tire. Owen driving for a little test drive to see. He was saying before his brakes were typically squealing when cold and kind of stopped when warm. So we're hopeful. You can go that way if you want. I was just stopping a lot faster. <laughs> yeah, that's doing it a lot better. Yeah, see, so after a couple brakes at different speeds, we're seeing that the squealing seems to be gone and he seems to be braking better. So we'll take I mean, it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As I told Owen, I'm happy to work on cars, happy to show people how to do stuff, and I mean, he helps me out, so I'll definitely help him out. You know. That'll about wrap up the video with Owen and I, and Thank you thanks for much, tuning in. <laughs> if you have any recommendations on what we should do to his car next that don't involve totaling the car, maybe a little bit of damage is okay. Just let us know what you think. <laughs> let us know what you think, but I'm happy we got the brakes done because Owen's going on a uh, little vacation trip tomorrow so he wanted to not have to deal with screeching yeah. his whole what seven hour drive each way six and a half six yeah, yeah close enough he has a little bit of traffic it'll be seven yeah.